Hi, it's Catherine again, here to talk about the ESA installation scenario and the initial configuration. So the initial scenarios we have when we want to install a ESA is actually the installation scenario, should I say, is that your ESA can be installed with one listener. The concept of listeners will be dealt in great detail later on. But think of it for now as an interface, okay? So we will install one interface on our ESA or two interfaces on our, uh, with our ESA. The other, con the other thing we have to think of, do I have multiple ESAs that I wish to configure and all be configured the same? In which case, maybe I should install them in a clustering manner. We will have a full recording just on clustering later on. And if you need to have some redundancy, that can be done actually on one box. If you want to have redundancy on one physical box, that can be done actually with pairing network interface card. We will need to make sure that our ESA is accepting incoming mail for the local domain that we are responsible for. And we will also make sure that to send out email, we will be actually routing outbound email coming from our internal mail server. To get your ESA working, actually, in real life, you need only one Ethernet. You could have two if you want, but only one that's good enough. So typically, you will always have your ESA, it should be sitting behind a firewall. So the traffic will arrive from the internet through your firewall. I'm sure you're using Cisco ESA firewall or fire, uh, a source fire, fire power firewall here. Uh, the email will then make it to the ESA, and the ESA will then pass it to your groupware server, who will then deliver the email to the client. And the reverse path is also the same. Best practices calls for your ESA to be located on your DMZ. So let's look at the case where we have only one interface actually connect, connected. So that interface we have over here, that Ethernet interface, will actually receive an IP address. And on that top of that IP address, so we will then set up that it start listening on port 25. So we'll have one listener, and that listener will be called all mail. That listener will actually have receive email arriving from the internet and will pass them that same interface will actually send the traffic to your groupware server for your email client. And your groupware server will then, same thing, pass the traffic to that single listener, and your ESA will analyze the email before it sends them to the outside world. I, um, every time you'll see one of those little uh, blue uh, cloud on a, on a screen, it's actually some tips that I added on that slide. An example of, uh, of here, a best practice you should consider according to network security. Uh, most of you, your network security auditor will ask actually that the management of your ESA done by the administrator should be done actually out of band. So you will actually use a management interface to do that management. What we call out-of-band management, I'm sure you know, is when the manager administrator traffic is not mingled with user traffic. In this particular uh, uh, topography, Topology, we have actually our ESA has two interfaces, so connected. So we will have actually one interface that will be pointing in, inward and another interface that will be pointing actually outward. More on the concept of listeners and how listeners associates with IP addresses and how IP addresses associates with Ethernet port in an upcoming recording. 
When the ESA was first uh, launched many, many moons ago by Iron Port, one of the, of the big advantage that it had over the, com the competitor was regarding is SMTP queue. So your ESA, of course, is receiving incoming email. That email will go through a bunch of hoops to be sanitized. So what we see here in gray that represent your ESA. And eventually, if the email is good to leave, let's say that this email is arriving from one of your users and is ready to go out to the internet, one of the advantage that the ESA had over its competitor, I started to say uh, when this was invented, was the fact that the ESA was having one deliverer queue, queue per domain. So if you have one domain over here that happens to be dead or down for, so let's say you have, I'm just taking that as an example, let's say you have Yahoo, and for whatever reason the Yahoo domain mail server is down right now, um, in the past all the email would get into the queue and they would all be sitting in the queue one after the other until that one email that is creating the congestion would get out of the way. And the email creating the congestion right now happens to be an email going to Yahoo, but Yahoo maybe is down. So all the other email in the past with other competitor solution were just sitting in that queue. And what Ironport di did with their ESA, it was, was to actually come out with a queue for each domain. So if, again, a domain would be down, well, okay, you've got all your email for Yahoo sitting here, but all the other email are eligible and just leave your ESA. So that was a big improvement when that was invented many, many, many years ago. For our initial configuration, the initial steps we'll have to watch for is that first we'll have to decide, do we want to have one listener or two listeners? More on that in upcoming video. Also, what will be my email address on my one or two listeners, interfaces that are being used by the listener? I need to also gather some uh, information about the network, such as what's the domain name server on my network, what will be the host name that I want to give to that ESA appliance. Then you can connect to the command line. The command line can be connected either with your console port, or you could also do a SSH, a secure shell, in the box. The box can also accept for command line SSH connection. Or, and that we say here optionally, because what you can do is actually connect for the first time straight into the GUI. And to connect straight in the GUI, actually when the ESA is shipped from Cisco to your location, it already has a default address. Uh, and the default address is the default management address is 192.168.42.42. Uh, just a little note here, some model like the uh, C190 does not have actually a management interface, in which case you would have to connect using Data1. If you have uh, the virtual version, the, the ESC v, uh, VM for your ESC, you also need to load your virtual appliance license. And basically, once you're at the GUI or the CLI, you get going with the basic settings. Keep in mind that you can always have centralized service that will be given to you by the Cisco Context SME. So Cisco Context uh, SME. And the job of the SME here, the Security Management Appliance, is actually to, um, to collect information, simplify your life. If someone arrives and say, hey, um, uh, who in our organization has received an email with the, with the title, the subject line, shark? Well, you don't want to have to log on individual SME one by one to try to see, did, did someone in New York got an email called shark? And did someone in Raleigh got an email named shark? You can have actually all your four ESAs over here sent uh, their reporting, their message tracking, and even their quarantine for spam, and only for spam, I'll come back to that later on, but their spam quarantine can all be stored locally on the SME. The SME is only used to provide services such as spam, message tracking, and reporting. 
If you wish to have centralized configuration, that will be done through clustering and more on that in a later re recording. So thank you very much for listening. What we discussed this time was actually the initial configuration of your ESA and also the topology. Do you want to have one or two listeners for your ESA? Thank you.